What's up fixers, Justin from Fix My PEV. And I know you just heard that noise in the little clip I shared in the beginning of this video. That is haptic buzz. And it was part of the rollout of Gemini 5100 firmware for the Pint and Pint X during the later part of last year. You may also know that it was implemented in some of the other board models, but today's video is just about the Pint and Pint X. So if you have another board model, you're gonna to wanna to skip this one or share it with one of your friends or family members who has a Pint or Pint X. So. I don't want to bore you with all of the reasons why you might want to do this, but I do want to summarize when 5100 was released, Future Motion not only implemented Haptic Buzz in agreement with the Consumer Product Safety Commission, they also locked down a couple of the features that we previously had access to, like the ability to calibrate the IMU, which is exactly what you would use to recalibrate the level orientation of your board after installing aftermarket rails. The other thing that they eliminated by upgrading to 5100 is the ability to use Bluetooth to interface with the one wheel in order to pair parts that might have been swapped in. Right now Future Motion uses a technique called parts pairing with their controller module and their BMS so that if you had a BMS fail or a controller fail and wanted to swap one in from another board that you have or buy one from somebody else in the community who's parting out their board you would not be able to swap them on 5100 and actually recalibrate them or repair them to avoid the dreaded incompatible hardware error. This tool that I'm going to show you today will allow you to downgrade Gemini 5100 on the Pint and the Pint X. Not all models are covered and I'll go over those in a moment, but you will be able to, for the most part, on the majority of these, downgrade from 5100 and allow yourself to either access things like the IMU calibration, the parts repairing not fixing, but pairing again, as well as for the OG Pint, things like Rewheel, which will allow you to modify your firmware and raise the pushback threshold, digital posi sensor on your foot pad, so it's a single zone instead of a dual zone, and a few other things that you can do with that. I do have a video on Rewheel, so I will be adding that as a clickable link to the end of this video, as well as in the description below, but that's not really what this tool is specifically for. The tool allows you to unlock the ability to then downgrade to an earlier firmware which will allow you to access those other things. Now the disclaimers that I mentioned about not all models being covered. If you have an OG Pint and you have a firmware version or hardware version rather that is above 5314 you're going to want to stop the video right here because this will not help you. Some of the newer boards that were shipped out after the Haptic Buzz firmware 5100 was out were already safeguarded by using a redesigned bootloader that does not work with this tool. So if you're above 5314 hardware on your pint, please do not continue the video because you will break your pint and we won't be able to recover it with the old school method for doing the downgrade, which required soldering, ST-Link, and manipulation using a computer program to navigate all that stuff. I won't get into that either right now, but you won't be able to save yourself if you proceed. So please take note of that. As far as the Pine X goes, we actually haven't seen a lot of people in the community using this tool on the Pine X yet. I believe it's been tested on one or two hardware versions for downgrading to 5076, which I believe is right below 5100 in the firmware releases. So you'd be able to get rid of haptic buzz. You don't have the ability to rewheel a Pine X, so get that out of your mind if you were thinking about that right now. Unfortunately, the rewheel project got shut down before they could do any further development beyond the Pint and the GT. So, if you have a Pine X and you're downgrading, you're probably safe if you have an older one, but if you have a newer one that came out, especially after all this haptic buzz stuff took place last year, then you're probably not gonna wanna try it on that either because for all we know, those could brick as well and you would be in a lot of trouble at that point. Nobody could help you. So, now that those are out of the way, I wanna go ahead and jump into the process and I'm just gonna share my screen with you. I will have a camera showing what the pint is doing and you'll be able to see how this works. It's very simple, but I just wanted to get this out to the masses because I think it's a really cool tool for the community and it gives us the freedom to do what we want with the products that we personally own. We've spent our hard-earned money on them and we wanna be able to enjoy them as much as possible. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this works here. I'm gonna start out and show you what you would expect to see if you were trying to connect to the board without downgrading 5100. And I'm gonna use FFM wheel, which is a clone of what was originally known as Rewheel. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the backup tab, click on my Pint firmware, connect to the board, 
If you've never done this, again, I will have a link to this process, but this is just for demonstrative purposes here. I should also note that none of the tools I'm using here, FFM wheel, rewheel, or the unlocker tool or anything are associated specifically with Fix My PEV. These are actually developed by independent people within our community. So all credit goes to them. This is for educational purposes only, letting you guys know the tools and resources that you have available to you to use on your own personally owned devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Flash Extractor. Please read these if you're going through the rewheel process at any point and haven't read these before. I've done this hundreds of times, so I'm gonna kind of skip through it quickly. But here's what'll happen if you're on 5100. You'll click to flash the update and you get an update error. You can click retry and start update, flash update, and you'll get an error again. So ultimately here, that's where we're gonna use the pint unlocker tool. They do have a GitHub repository where you can actually download the code if you wanna run it offline. And it's very simple, gives you four steps here. You download the zip, you would open this index HTML file in whatever browser you're using. Use Google Chrome. I don't recommend any other ones. This one is confirmed to work because it has web Bluetooth capability. And here's what it looks like if you run it from your computer offline. There is also a website available where you can run it online, owtk.pages.dev. I will have links to all of these resources in the description below. But when you're ready to go ahead and proceed, you do wanna make sure to do this fairly quickly. So you're gonna click connect and it's gonna do a verification. I will tell you right now that my verification will fail because my board has been rewheeled in the past and the bootloader doesn't look exactly the way that this pint unlocker is expecting it to. So even though I'm on 5314 and I know it will work, it's gonna give us an error. If you're above 5314 and get this same error, do not proceed. So you'll see what I'm talking about here. Literally one button click, you're gonna pair it and just let it do its thing. And then immediately go back to FFM wheel and retry the update. And you can see it's doing its thing. So I'm just gonna wait for this to go through and I'll be able to continue just like I would normally if we weren't on 5100. So that's all there is to it. If you have any questions about what you can do after the fact, again, for OG Pint, you'll be able to install either the base 5040 firmware or you can use Rewheel to modify that firmware and give yourself some additional features. Or with the Pint X, you can go ahead and flash the Gemini 5076 to get rid of your haptic buzz. So thanks for tuning in and hope to see you guys around. Later. You didn't think I would just leave you guys hanging and not show you proof that it worked, right? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my pull up my app here. Diagnostics page. Just for your information, 5312 is 5314 on 5040 because I don't think it was originally designed to run 5040, so there's a couple little issues, but we got our board here and we will see if it makes any haptic buzz at all. And I'll show you the speed after the fact. No haptic buzz, no pushback, and I just went 17. Let's see if we can hit 20. I ran out of runway. Ran out of runway there. And I don't know if I should really be pushing it that much, but let's find out. Twenty point four. Safe to say we are back in business. Enjoy, ride safe out there. Again, if you have any questions, let me know down below. Later.